A lot of people, one of the misconceptions, if you would, is people think that we take their picture, we take their photo, and we store it, and we compare it against their photo every time they go in front of a camera. We don't do that. What we do is we take that photo, and it is immediately converted into a mathematical vector. That's just a bunch of numbers on a screen. Welcome to Business Ninjas, brought to you by Write For Me where you'll hear from business leaders who are out there growing their business and slaying it every day. Learn from the masters. Let's get started. Hey, everybody. Welcome back for another episode of Business Ninjas. I'm here today with Mitch Goldenberg. He's the Director of Physical Access at Veritas. Mitch, welcome to the show. Great to be here, Kelsey. Thanks for the invite. Yeah, excited to have you. So Mitch, why don't you start? Tell us a little bit about yourself. Well, I live in Charleston, South Carolina, about 15 minutes from the coast with my wife of 25 years. Uh, all our kids are grown and, and off doing their things post uh, college, but we do have two Labrador retrievers who we love and they love uh, hanging out with us. I love the beach. I love long rides on my Harley Davidson sort of, if you've ever been to Charleston, we have a lot of oak covered windy roads and they, they are great in the summertime for shady rides on a motorcycle. Uh, we love relaxing in our pool. In fact, uh, we have a pool in the backyard and we were already in it this morning. Uh, oh, there we it, go. Is, it, it is hot and sticky here in Charleston in the middle of July. <laughs> uh, I've been in the tech hardware space for about 10 years. I love learning new skills. I'm a person of faith. And I love Jesus with everything I've got. That's fantastic. It sounds like, you know, you've got a solid foundation to take you to, you know, your, your professional career. Tell me a little bit more about what you guys do at Veritas. So what we do is we are identity experts and digital security scientists committed to applying biometric recognition innovations to ensure that all people enjoy the right to use their real identities to move freely throughout sort of our highly connected and digital world moving into the physical world. And the platform itself that we operate identifies people. And we do this digitally by scanning a government issued identification like a driver's license, and then comparing that to a live selfie that you take right on your phone uh, or you could do it on a desktop computer. And then we use that identity to verify that you are who you say you are in both the digital or online world, as well as the physical world. Hmm. Interesting. Tell me more about that. So the digital world would be things like creating a bank account online. A lot of people don't know this, but there's a tremendous amount of fraud in banking. And banks don't want you to know this because it looks bad on them. But they literally write hundreds of millions of dollars off every year due to fraud and money laundering and people uh, overtaking other people's accounts. It's a big problem. So I'll get to this, I think, maybe as we move along through this interview. But several years ago, a very large bank was having a problem with what's called KYC, and that's knowing your customer. So knowing your customer's real identity. So we do that for banks and credit unions and online casinos so that that, that, that institution knows who they're dealing with, that it's that person. Mm -hmm. uh, and then we've moved that to the physical world, right, in places like airports. So Veritas uh, uh, is uh, preeminent in all of the airports in Italy, for example. We do that in places like stadiums and arenas uh, all throughout Europe uh, to allow people to, instead of using a physical ticket or even a phone, which is considered high tech and innovative, we say, you don't need any of that. You just use your face to enter the stadium. So we literally convert your ticket into your facial recognition and you just walk right through. It's pretty neat stuff. And we even uh, have uh, applications where you can pay for things just with your face. Wow. So tell me, you know, and I excuse my maybe being naive, but how is, you know, that the platform and the technology that Veritas uses different than just like a face ID that I use to say, you know, to open my phone? 
in a word, Kelsey, accuracy, mm. accuracy. So just about everything out there has sort of a, either a governing body or at least uh, a, a, an institution level uh, that monitors what you do and how you do it. Ours is called the NIST. That's N-I-S-T. It's the National Institute of Standards and Technologies. And the governing body over that, believe it or not, is the Department of Commerce of the United States. So it's a government body. And what the NIST does is the NIST tests products like ours on a pretty regular basis, multiple times a year. Every You can submit up to four times a year. We are ranked number two in the world out of about 88 companies that do this for accuracy. Wow, that's fantastic. So when, you know, when you're talking about your kind of client profiles, because it sounds like Veritas, the platform and the technology can really be used in just about any different industry, anything like that. But what I heard you say was kind of banks, airports, um, you know, entertainment. Do you tend to see kind of those three main sectors or industries or are there other ones as well? You know, those are those are our main sectors. However, we do have customers that use us in data centers, in oil and gas, you know, any anywhere there's a place where you really want a higher level of security, but you don't want to sacrifice convenience and what we call hospitality. You don't want to make it Fort Knox for people who have to get in there. So we just use your face. Yeah. Really, really cool tech. We also do it in um, a couple of large hotel brands in Europe. So you can you can um, uh, use the application to create your reservation. Then you attach your facial image to your reservation. And when you get to the hotel, you just look at the camera and it checks you in and, and initiates your key. Pretty wow. cool stuff. And then one more application that we have is for renting vehicles. So uh, you can in, in, in also in Europe. Uh, the application is used to rent vehicles, and they do that by creating a facial biometric QR code, which hopefully we'll get to that, but we're the only company in the United States that has a facial biometric QR code. So you upload your, your face. Your face is actually turned into a mathematical vector. That vector is turned into a QR code, and you just flash that QR code as you're exiting with your vehicle, and you've rented your vehicle. Pretty cool stuff. That's Very wild. That's wild. Technology really blows my mind. So tell me more about this um, facial biometric QR code. So the facial biometric QR code, I want to back up on that because um, a lot of people, one of the misconceptions, if you would, is people think that we take their picture, we take their photo and we store it and we compare it against their photo every time they go in front of a camera. We don't do that. What we do is we take that photo and it is immediately converted into a mathematical vector. That's just a bunch of numbers on a screen, right? What we can then do is we can take that mathematical vector and turn it into an actual QR code. We all know what a QR code is. In our world, it actually allows the individual to then be considered a self-sovereign identity because they're not giving their identity to anybody. They're the ones that maintain control over that QR code. They can put that QR code on a card that then resides with them. They can put it on a piece of paper, print it out from an email, or like most people, they can put it on their phone and then they take their phone and they show it to our reader, which is actually behind me. Our readers have a QR code reader on it you, you place that QR code in front of that reader. Now, but there's still a camera there, Mitch. Well, all that reader is doing is saying, is the person in front of the camera the person that is digitally recognized in that QR code, yes or no? So what that means is if you found my phone or if you found my QR code, you cannot just take that QR code and use it to gain entry into places uh, where this is set up because your face is not in that QR code, mine is. Hmm. Wow, so I imagine you know that makes the technology a lot more secure. Absolutely. Yeah, tell me Absolutely. more about that. Well, um, you, again, on the QR code side, uh, your, uh, 
you're maintaining control of that QR code. It can't be yeah. mixed, but there's additional security layers. So because when we take the selfie, it's a live selfie, and we actually ask the uh, individual to smile while they're taking the selfie, because that then is proving life. So you, you can't just take a picture of a dead person, right? And then go and try and steal their identity, right? I guess it's happened. Um, it's, uh, it's, it's, it's proof against anti-spoofing. And we have, there are about 14 different spoofing attacks. You've heard of 3D printers. Well, people have taken a 3D printer and printed out someone's picture and used that as their face, not with our software. Our, our software is iBeta level two certified against anti-spoofing. Nobody has spoofed our uh, our system yet in its eight years of existence, not once. Um, other spoofing attacks, people do something as simple as taking a picture, cutting out the eye holes and putting it in front of it. People do mannequin attacks. There are all kinds of attacks. There are, are bad guys in every industry and there are bad guys in our industry. Uh, so, so that is another way of, of proving how secure we really are. Wow. I think that's so fascinating. And, you know, the, the world of technology is constantly changing and, you know, people are obviously constantly changing and evolving and, you know, maybe not for the best being as smart as they are, you know, clearly coming up with these, these different attacks to, to cheat the system. But, you know, I'm curious to pick, to pick your brain, Mitch, looking forward, do you have any kind of um, inklings about exciting developments or trends that you anticipate in the field of biometric authentication? Yeah, obviously, we mentioned the QR code, and that's yeah. actually pretty new. That okay. is early adoption right now, right? We, we got the patent about six or eight months ago. But another exciting uh, piece of biometrics is called voice biometrics. And Veridos is the only company in the world that operates a facial biometric and a voice biometric. Only, co only company that does that. And to add to that, our voice biometric is ranked number one in the world for accuracy. How do voice biometrics work? Let's say you're calling your insurance company, right? You call in, you say, hey, it's Mitch. I just want to check on a claim that I made. Well, you get the standard. What's your, what's your date of birth? What's your mother's maiden name? What street do you live on? It takes about a minute to really confirm. And a minute doesn't seem like a long time when we say it here, but you know, just like me, when you're on the phone, a minute seems like an hour, right? Mm -hmm. And of course you're frustrated because you know it's you. <laughs> With our voice biometric, it takes five seconds to onboard the individual. It's language independent, right? So any language, wow. right? And it's voice, independent, meaning uh, five seconds, you can say anything you want. We, we're not going to give you a script to say the lazy brown cow jumps over the moon. You say anything you want. We capture your voice biometric in five seconds. Then every time you call back, it only needs three seconds to verify who you are. And boom, that agent on the other end knows that you are Kelsey, that you are Mitch. That is saving companies hundreds of thousands of dollars because when you and I call, we just think it's a five minute call. But most of these large organizations that have these call centers, they're fielding tens of thousands of calls every day. Multiply that time and those time savers, we're literally saving companies tens of thousands of dollars every month. That's brilliant. And I, you know, when we talk about secure, you can't change it you can't you know come up with a way to change voice like you know that that's that's got to be well you can but you know what i mean <laughs> well let, let's touch on that for a second because there might be listeners out there that have seen the news stories that i follow yeah and there was one recently in the news where an individual stole a girl's voice they called the girl's parents and demanded a ransom and they got that ransom. So a voice actually can be stolen. Thank goodness that's never happened to us. 
And we even have a nice blog out there about what are called deep fakes and how our software is actually used to prevent things like I just told you in that ransom situation. Huh. We'll have to check that out. That's a good little plug to check out. Check out your blog. You know, we're we're partial to a good blog. <laughs> nice. Well, awesome. Well, Mitch, as we start to wrap up this conversation, is there anything that you want to leave our listeners with? You know, either about the industry, about changes, anything you want to leave our listeners with? Well, we talked a little bit about misconceptions, and I, yeah. before before we wind down, I I want to at least share out there. Um, what happens when this process takes place? Because outside of the US, this technology is widespread, widespread. People are very trusting of it and there's very little risk. Inside the US, there's a fear. I think when people think of the word biometrics, for some reason, and I don't know why, they correlate that with DNA. Like somehow when we're taking your biometric, we're somehow capturing your DNA. We're not. You and I already talked about the fact that we don't even take a photo. We immediately convert that photo into a mathematical vector. And that mathematical vector is locked. So no other program outside of Veridas can break in and decode that mathematical vector. Mm -hmm. But get this, once we create that vector, that vector is then sent to the AWS secure cloud. Once it's checked in the cloud to find out is that le identification legitimate or is it fake, it can also run lists against the anti-money laundering list, the terror watch list, the sex offender list. So depending on your application, it can check against those lists. But once it's done that, we delete the file. We don't even keep it. It's automatically deleted. This is a 100% secure and safe process. I think that's a really important note to leave our listeners with, you know, just like you said, you know, that fear. Um, and I imagine a lot of working with these companies is, you know, you know, refuting some of those misconceptions and calming those fears and talking about how secure and how safe, you know, not only your data is, but, you know, other people's data as well. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, Mitch, I think this has been a great conversation. I appreciate you breaking down, you know, the facial facial biometric QR code, kind of the advances in the, the industry. I think it's absolutely fascinating. And I uh, really appreciate you being on Business Ninjas today. Hey, Kelsey, can I share one more thing? Yeah, absolutely. Very briefly. I want to encourage people out there today. We're in a very competitive landscape when you talk about business. One of the best pieces of advice I got several years ago was this celebrate your colleagues wins because a rising tide lifts all boats i think that's fantastic i love that i love that quote you know for for many reasons not only for celebrating your colleagues you know but for for other aspects of life in general i think that's fantastic and certainly being a man of faith you know you know the importance of you know having having faith in others so i think that was you know a great little bit to to leave our listeners with thanks so much kelsey it was a wonderful being on the show today great to have you Thank you.